Good morning. You're very welcome to our webinar today about telecom solutions and what you should choose going forward. To make an introduction, I'm Gordon Fahey, Managing Director of Avita Communications. We're a telecoms provider, network provider, and all-round infrastructure solution provider with a head office in Galway and engineers based in Dublin and Belfast. We provide a full nationwide cover. The company has been going now for 11 years, but most of the people involved in the company have over 25 years experience in the telecoms industry. As you all know, things changing rapidly and the move towards the cloud, there's a number of changes in the way we communicate. We've built a strategic partnership with Enfon, who provide a leading European cloud um, solution. So essentially what I want to do first off is just give you a brief overview of Avita Communications and the services we provide. The solutions that we provide are essentially working from the traditional telephone system to the cloud telephone system and overall unified communication solutions. This includes presence, it includes diary management, it includes office working, remote working, home working, and obviously they're very prevalent at the moment. We also provide network solutions. So the most important thing about any voice or data solution is, is that you have the infrastructure to work it on. We moved into the network side of things a few years ago, and essentially now we provide fixed networks and wireless networks with complete seamless usage from beginning to end. The next item there that you can see, item number five, is mobility. Um, it's, a, it's an easy one to explain, but mobility probably doesn't sum it up fully. Essentially what mobility is, is being able to access your devices, being able to access your communication, your unified communications from any location. Mobility allows us to use smartphones, laptops, home working, remote working in any way, shape or form. So that covers the full topic of working outside of the office. Uh, flexibility is the key, obviously, with what's going on in the world at the moment. We all find that we one day we're going to be in the office, the next day we might not be, and this can change overnight. And flexibility is absolutely key. And that's where I think the cloud solution is going to show you how it excels over other solutions available in the market. And also we provide call centers. Um, call centers essentially are anything from a five user call center up to a 10,000 user call center. And this gives you the flexibility of queuing and dealing with large numbers of calls and obviously bringing out statistics, etc., of what information that you, um, how your agents have performed and how efficiently you've dealt with the calls that your business has received. Now, just to bring it back a little bit, as regards Avita Communications, we can deliver solutions to any size customer. So anything from two extensions or two network connections to 100,000 users and 100,000 network connections, we treat all of our customers exactly the same way. Essentially, we're a very much a service-led company and we provide excellent after-sales service and excellent pre-sales service to allow people to make sure that people get the right solution in the beginning and our complete and utter differentiator from other people in the market is no matter which solution you buy, whether it's cloud or on-site or network, we will send engineers to install. We will never leave you in a scenario where you have to um, get the equipment shipped out to you and put it in yourself. We will always send a qualified certified engineer out to you to get it set up properly and give you full training on the product. Jump onto the next slide now. Um, so you can see there from the boxes what we're trying the message we're trying to get across is that we offer a complete solution so if your business requires communication solutions or infrastructure we will provide it as a one-box solution so you don't have to look to additional partners we can provide you with the telephony the network infrastructure the um uh, the wireless lan network the unified communication solutions and basically anything else that you would require to get business up and running and moved towards an infrastructure that allows you to work effectively. Also, 
from a mobility perspective, if you want to bring in home workers, you want to bring in laptops, tablets, smartphones, etc., all of these will be provided by Avita and essentially installed and configured by Avita. And just to jump on then, some of our customers. So you can see some of our customers listed there on the screen. Probably some of our largest customers would be the likes of the House of the Oireachtas and the Office of Public Works. Um, we, but we look after everything from government to your local solicitors to your local shop. We provide the solutions to businesses of all sizes. So that finishes my five minutes. Thanks very much for listening. And I'm going to pass you now over to Paul Sparks from Enfon to give you a bit more in-depth into the product. Thank you very much, Gordon. First of all, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Paul Sparks. I'm the account manager for, uh, for Enfon for the UK and Ireland. And I'm delighted to be involved in uh, presenting this, uh, well, first of hopefully many presentations for our uh, strategic partner, Avita. So what I really want, want you to do after this, um, after this, bear with me, user error after the, this presentation there we go um we have a number of objectives that i'd like you to uh, uh understand once uh, once we get through this presentation so first of all is why enfon so us as a business who we are where we come from and what our strategy is our market positioning so where do we sit in the marketplace our capabilities so um first of all why cloud and then what, what is our capability? What is our technical capability and our infrastructure? And not just our core platform, but then we have value added services, which we can plug in to our, uh, our core platform to solve a problem for you. Cloudia, Cloudia is, so just, just so we can understand, uh, our business is called Enfon and our telephone system is called Cloudia. So when I refer to uh, our telephone system, it is Cloudia. Um, and then our Teams integration. So we have our native applications and we also have um, um, other applications that we integrate into and we do very tight integration with uh, Teams. We'll also be doing a demonstration. So my colleague, uh, Ray Woods, at the end of this, uh, at the end of my uh, slides, will be doing a presentation uh, where he'll be showing you Cloudia, our native soft phone application, Teams integration. So we do, as I mentioned before, very tight integration with Teams. Um, and then finally, you have a cloud solution. You may have a distributed workforce. Then how do you report on those? So we have an application called N Monitoring Queues, which gives you visibility of all of the activity on the platform and then gives you a holistic a viewpoint of that which you can also then extract uh, detail reports on the activity on the platform so first of all Enfon who are Enfon where did we come from so we're an organization uh, a telecoms organization that was actually born in the cloud we've been around since 2007 and um, our main focus is Europe so um, we are ultimately looking for global domination, but at the moment uh, we're in 15 territories within the European uh, region. That's our main focus at the moment. Um, we're, you know, we're a growing entity and we're looking to be the, the largest cloud telephony provider in the region. In regards to our finances, so we, um, we grew to a certain size and then once we got to that size, we had to work out, right, what is the next step? What's the best thing for Enfon? Do we get acquired uh, by a larger entity uh, and lose the brand? Or do we get additional investment? So in 2018, we went out to the Frankfurt Stock Exchange and um, we raised a significant war chest, um, which then we could then push back into growth within the business and to R&D. Uh, to develop the platform further to increase our footprint. In regards to um, how many people that we've got on the platform or how many users, we've, we've got scale. So we've got just under half a million users on the platform at the moment, and that equates to uh, 41,000 enterprises. So um, 
I suppose you as an end user looking to do your due diligence on where would I potentially put my my voice it's critical to my organization um, well you know us as an organization MFON are we in a, a good financial position yes we are are we going to be around in five years yes we are are we looking to be acquired no we're not so um, rest assured you know NFON are in a very very good position so where have we done it before and where do we fit into the market so um, the, what we've got here is a multi-tenanted platform it just means that we can provide uh, a solution for for one user right through to 250,000 users um, so we fit into SME you know small to medium enterprises and we fit into mid and large enterprises so I've just got some examples of some of the uh, partners that we have ac across across Europe um, and I'll give you a couple of e examples of uh, some of the um, some of the deployments that we've done so um, we've got uh, some of our largest uh, deployments is London Borough of Hackney uh, in the UK and that is uh, seven and a half thousand users um, which also has a contact center that contact center services all of the uh, all of the uh, tenants that live in the borough uh, and that can be accessed either via voice by making a telephone call or by uh, opening other channels so what Hackney did was go for an omni-channel experience so if you need to communicate with them you can do that through a web chat you can do it through whatsapp you can do it through email and it will then um, queue up um, any of those interactions into the contact center and uh, give the um, give the people in the borough access to them uh, and um, sorry uh, access to to resources within uh, Hackney Borough Council we've got London and Quadrant Housing Association there's another one that um, four and a half thousand users um, with those four and a half thousand users they're all using Microsoft Teams as the interface for call control and uh, collaboration as well as having our uh, NFOM platform in the back end um, so they've got the best of both worlds using Teams at the front end and our telephone system at the back end um, so you know some some really good good names on there um, and um, you know we've got some case studies on these which we can share with you so why cloud why would you move to the cloud what are the reasons to move to the cloud so increased resilience so whether um, it's adverse weather conditions uh, there's been a flood um, whatever um, you uh, in your day-to-day -day going into the office uh, if you can't make it into the office for any reason um, then um, we've we've got a flexible solution for you so um, we've got in the back end we've got um, um, no if you've got an on-site telephone system that just means there is a single point of failure because it's on a single site um, in the back end we have geo redundant data centers it just means that if one infrastructure fails uh, it will fail over onto a, a separate infrastructure so in the back end we know that the the infrastructure is secure and then you as a user every day going into the office or maybe not going into the office um, it doesn't matter whether there's been a flood or a fire whatever emergency there may have been you can still take calls you can still take calls on uh, whatever device you log into to access your uh, uh, cloud infrastructure so problem solving so we we're in a pandemic at the moment you know there's restrictions that are put on us by the government um, that means that we don't work in the way that we previously used to work that could be once again everybody going into a single location now you've got that distributed workforce uh, it may you know there may be some consolidation that you want to move into a smaller premises um, or um, you know everybody's working from home we can cater for that because uh, it, it not you know I suppose works not where you go it's what you do and it's just having access to the right tools to be able to to continue you know have business continuity once again I just you know I mentioned the dispersed workforce there and flexible working we're seeing that more um, I suppose this has been accelerated was probably on everybody's roadmap to do eventually but it's been accelerated by the pandemic 
Another reason to move to cloud is consumption based. So you only use, you only pay for what you use. So it's easy just to flex up and flex, flex down whenever required. If you're, a, you know, if you've got a seasonal business where you get more workers in the summer, uh, it's easy just to add those additional users on whenever you need, and then flex down when, when the, uh, uh, when the um, spike has finished. Increased resilience, or which I mentioned already, uh, and integrations. So integrations, as I mentioned, we do Teams integration uh, very tightly. Uh, the, we will have a demo of that um, in just a moment. So our capabilities. So we have a data center. Um, the infrastructure is in Germany because we're a German organization. Uh, and um, the two geo-redundant uh, data centers, which are tier four data centers, are in Munich, and the other one is in Nuremberg. They're um, updating throughout the day and replicating, So, um, and we've got their load balance, so there's never more than 50% uh, load on either infrastructure. So, as I mentioned, highly available platform. Uh, it's a multi-tenanted platform, so whether you've got you know 100,000 users or just one user, you you know it's cookie cutter stuff. You you know uh, you get all of the same functionality. We have two license types depending on your budget or the the uh, um, or, or or your requirement, and with that this this just goes over the internet. So your existing internet, as long as you've got uh, adequate bandwidth, uh, will cater for uh, a call. Um, for a telephone call, it's 100K. So it's a very small amount of bandwidth that you would require to make a call. So all you need is an internet connection, whether that is a traditional internet connection or via 4G, as long as you've got an IP connection, you can make and take calls and be part of hunt groups and skill groups within your organization, no matter where you are. Um, so easy to use. We provision the handsets, uh, we ship them straight out to your site and it's plug and play. With our partner Avita, they can manage that whole process and just give you, you know, peace of mind uh, that, that this will be managed correctly and that you've got, you know, they've tested the network, they make sure that you are ready to go to cloud. We have uh, up to 150 traditional telecoms features on the platform. So um, that just means that, you know, we've got advanced call queuing, uh, skill-based routing. So these are advanced telephony features that you would expect to find on any telephone system. We can offer that through our cloud platform. Um, this is all on a cost per user per month. And as I said, it's a consumption model. So you only pay for what you use, whether that's flexing up or flexing down, that's, that's completely up to you guys. And we have, uh, you know, we have um, uh, a network of partners all over Europe and uh, leading the way in, uh, in Ireland is Avita. Then integration. So over and above, I've talked about the core platform. So we've got, as I mentioned, over 150 features on our platform. Um, we can, you know, we can, um, we can cater for multi-office or flexible working. We can also just add on, switch on uh, call recording, depending on what the nature of your business. And if you need to record calls, you know, we can do that. And we have a number of call recording uh, solutions, which are GDPR compliant, MIFID 2, and PCI compliant as well, in case you're taking payments over the phone. Um, and I also mentioned this as well. So we have a, a call monitoring platform, which you're gonna see in a bit, which is called end monitoring queues. It just means that if you have that distributed workforce, you'll be able to report on them. You can see the activity of what they do, how long they're on the phone, um, and it just enables you to manage your organization better by having visibility of what the activity is. We have CTI, so if you may may need to integrate into your database, whether it's Dynamics or, or uh, Salesforce, we integrate with um, uh, 50 um, different CRM platforms, databases straight out of the box. We have Cloud Contact Center, which is for our uh, for um, um, more complex call routing and reporting. Um, um, 
customers. And then we have Microsoft Teams integration, which is done via direct routing. So we've got two license types. We've got business standard, which is very basic. So that just enables you to connect to one telephone. And that was usually a, either a handset on the desk or it sees Microsoft Teams as a uh, as a device. With both licenses that I'm just about to show you, we don't sell you a license and then add on things after. Everything is out of the box. So um, that can be, um, that, that will be, you know, a 50 participant um, conference, uh, conferencing suite or skill-based routing. All of the functionality is straight out of the box. So we have business standard, which is, um, which connects to one handset, but then you can add on a mobility client if required. Um, the uh, uh, there's encryption on there, so SRTP encryption. It just means that your calls are safe and everything is encrypted. So the level of security is very high on there. Um, you can connect into a single device, as I mentioned, which is a handset on the desk. Um, and when I did mention the SRTP encryption, um, there's no extra charge for that. And then the business premium license is um, is where well, you can log up to up to nine different devices. So if, for example, you're logged into Microsoft Teams and Microsoft Teams fails, um, then you can just log into our native application and, uh, you know, whether it's a soft client or the handset on your desk and continue taking calls wherever you are. With this as well, we've just introduced at no extra cost uh, screen share and video on the premium license. And once again, you have the SRTP encryption on this, but you also get call recording. So this is very basic ad hoc call recording. We just press star one and it will record the call, whether it's someone reading off an address to you and you just need to make a note of it, or you're getting an abusive call, you can just press star one and it will email that recording into your, uh, so you'll receive an email uh, in your Outlook. Um, Oh, our Cloud Your application is our native application, which is um, operating system and device agnostic. So no matter what what device or or operating system you're using, you will have the same user experience. And the elephant in the room at the moment is uh, Microsoft Teams. So uh, we integrate into Teams. It just means that um, for those organizations that are out there using this application, which is very powerful, uh, it just means that we can plug our telephone system, which is Cloudia, into Microsoft, uh, Microsoft Teams. So you're getting the power of Microsoft Teams and the power of uh, the enterprise, uh, ent enterprise, ent enterprise, sorry, enterprise voice uh, platform that is Cloudia uh, working together seamlessly. How we do that is that um, we don't replace the Microsoft phone system. Um, what we do is we enhance it. So we plug directly into the Microsoft phone system. All it is is just uh, is just running some scripts within your 0365 tenant and uh, that points at our domain, uh, which gives a seamless um, seamless user experience. And with that as well, we've just introduced call recording uh, for Microsoft Teams, which is new to the market. Uh, with that, that just uh, um, it gives you a native experience. So all the call call recording is done within the Teams client, uh, and all the uh, recordings are stored within Azure. And you can nominate which data centers um, or which regions uh, through Azure that the call recordings are stored. Um, this can be, you know, it's comp it's compliant, so GDPR, MIFID II, and PCI compliant. It's an enterprise solution, so it gives you cognitive services. It will get transcriptions of the call and embed them in your uh, your nominated CRM platform. Um, it's a very, very powerful tool, um, and we're uh, um, happy to bring that to market. In, re in regards to devices, uh, we have um, a set of approved devices, which we know work, and we are very, very happy to support. Um, they are uh, the market leaders, Yealink, Poly, Gigaset, Schnom, Panasonic, and Fanville. So that's for handsets. 
We've got headsets, which are uh, uh, market leaders again, Poly or Plantronics, Sennheiser and Jabra. And then we do room systems as well, um, which is Poly and uh, other peripherals. So um, thank you very much for um, listening to me. I'm just going to hand over now to my colleague, uh, Ray Woods, who will be able to do a demonstration of the applications um, which we've just discussed. Ah, that's better. Now I'm unmuted. People can hear me. Perfect. OK, so hopefully everyone should be able to see my screen with our Cloudia application in front. Um, so that should be fine. Um, so this is, as Paul um, rightly said, this is our soft phone, our Cloudia application. And as you can see, it's quite clean, quite easy to in any as I go through this, you'll see it's quite very easy to use. So pretty straightforward. Um, this is the opening page. It says your name and your extension number. You can search by obviously various different users if you want to. Normal features that you can do, you can literally put yourself on do not disturb. You can literally choose which ringer you want to have um, on or off or which device you want to use for various different speakers, etc. and ringing. So you've got all of those features easily to sh show at the top. To make a call, you can just use your keypad, which you can see here. Or you can simply just make a call by dragging someone over to the other side and making that call. Here we go. Here you can see it's ringing someone. Uh, if they answer the call, that would be great. You can see now Paul's answered the call, which is there. I'm just going to mute it. And if I wanted to now show, share my video screen with him, I can share a video screen. So I can click on the video screen with him if I wanted to, except it won't let me. Wow. Okay, all screen share because we're on the video here. Oh, okay. Uh, it's not let me do it because I'm showing this. Uh, I'm on here um, using this video, but you can share screen and I could obviously then add a third party onto that call for a conference or forward that call to him simply by doing it there. It's simple and easy. Um, hopefully, did you answer the call on your web browser, uh, Paul? I, sorry, I answered it on my mobile, so you might want okay. to try it again, and we right. can show the yeah, video. Okay, Apologies. just do it again. Yeah. yeah. Okay. There we go. All right. Uh, can't get it, can't get the right to help. Right. Here we go. So call goes over. He answers on his desk phone. Right. You answered on your web browser. It's really simple. Okay, we try again. Sorry about this. Right, go on. Right, go. Web browser. You wouldn't believe we actually practiced this before then. <laughs> Just answer the. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I've right. had it. It's picked it up on Teams, so yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll we'll give that one a we'll minute. But basically, we'll come, come yeah, yeah. Basically, that. you need to answer it on your web browser, Paul. It's yeah, star yeah. fifty five on the web browser app. Okay. Um. So you can obviously have a call there. You can see who's available, and so obviously if no one's logged in. You've got that. You can have a history key, so you can see the calls. So you can see I've tried to call um Paul Spark several times today, and we've been on a call. If you have any voicemails, it will show you voicemails here, and you can obviously pick up your voicemail if you should so wish to. Contacts, this will show you your corporate directory contacts. So you can choose whether you're using your corporate or your global directory or your private entries. So if I click on private, I have a couple of numbers here. And obviously then you can literally delete one or add a user to your personal contacts as well, if you wanted to, to um, show both. So that's on my global contacts. Under the settings tab, Obviously, I can now change my um, password. I can choose which device I'm using as my default. I can choose whether I want a blip in my ear to have a call waiting, whether I'm allowing people to page to my handset or intercom, and a very old feature called manager secretary working um, for parallel ringing, ringing. So if someone doesn't actually want this application on their mobile device, but they may wish to receive a call on their mobile, they could just select that and type a mobile number or they could use uh, uh, select a, a, 
um, an extension if they wanted to. So if I wanted to, to use Paul, Paul as my extension. So if anyone rings my extension now, I can say that's also going to ring Paul. Paul's extension. It's, I say it's a very old feature, manager secretary working, but it's still used. You can choose the different ringtones. Um, quite a lot of people love to have a different ringtone for internal calls, for external, external calls, and for group calls. So you can have different ringtones for different different things. It's uh, quite, you wouldn't um, believe it's a really sort of feature that a lot of people request. They may be away from their desk and they want to know in their ear if they've got a headset or on the desktop if they've got speakers, what type of call is ringing without them actually looking at it. Um, if anyone sends you a voicemail, you can. This also can be set by the administrator, but you, it, users can say whether they want a copy of the of the uh, um, a voicemail, etc. The next tab we have is call forwarding and you can set up call forwarding profiles to say when I'm on holiday, I want all my calls to go to, I want it to go to a telephone number or I can say I want it to go to a group, I can say I want it to go to the sales group, etc. wherever you want it to go to and these can be predetermined for different, different criteria. So when you're in a meeting, you can say I want my calls to go to my colleagues and you can create as many of these as you like um, for different profiles. Then when you're on the call and you say, right, I'm just going to go on a meeting now, you can click on the top and choose the profile that you wanted to be selected, whether it be holiday or meeting. And you can do this from any of the applications. You can do it from the mobile application, the desktop application or the WebRTC application. It's, it, they're all the same. So you can choose your setting for various different um, uh, call forwarding profiles. Should you be in different groups um, or want to be in different, uh, we call them queues, but if you're in a different group and you want to be, can you come out the sales group? Can you come in the the um, the accounts team? Can you answer calls for that, etc.? You can put yourself in and out of different groups. So I can say, I want to be in the sales team now and answer calls. This can be um, literally uh, uh, stopped by the administrator you can you can resolve this feature as so people can't do this but it is quite a nice feature if people are in different groups and you get more calls in a particular uh, group etc uh, function keys so once you've done the function keys these are the keys that you see here but they're also all the keys that you see on your fiscal phone or any other device that you may have mobile. Once you've done them once, they're replicated across all devices. And the feature keys can be a number of things. They can be a BLF key, so you can see the status of other users. You can have it as a function key if you wanted to do like a call pickup or a call intrude feature key. You can have it as a speed dial, so you can say I want to dial um, the local pizza company down the road or the you know the uh, uh, your, your home etc partner etc. Um, or you can have it as an intercom key if you wanted to, so you can have it as a paging key if you wanted to, or you can have it as a service key. So any of these can be can be set to be any feature set you want. On the desktop, you can also have fax. So um, I'm just going to quickly show another one that's got fax. There we go. So uh let's go sorry go to another one that's got fax so if i want to send a fax i can send a fax to a particular recipient so i can uh, put in the telephone number of the actual user that i want send it to the cover sheet so i can create a custom sheet and say subject is uh a v to order etc message can i place this order etc um, with your PO, you can then attach the purchase order across to it and um, and send it. I know it's a very old technology, but you'll be surprised the number of people that still use fax um, for certain criteria. This just means you don't need a physical fax. You can receive and make a fax from your desktop to a, a third-party fax machine, etc., should you wish to. Now, this is the WebRTC version, as Paul mentioned earlier. works on, on the, obviously, your web browser, but you may wish to download a full fax client for Macs or PC, and this is where you can always download the latest version uh, um, of your application. It looks exactly the same if I open up the desktop version. This looks exactly the same, except it's, um, let's say, a, um, an EXE version that works on your desktop, but it is exactly the same. It looks and feels the same. It's also for courses. It chooses what, what, whatever version, and obviously, Info just tells you the latest version. So on here, this is your soft phone. 
Um, really simple. You can have this on, a, say, a WebRTC version, a full fat client, or you can have it on your mobile device, and it looks and feels exactly the same on all devices. So you don't need to to have anything. Um, we look at individuals as the extension number. So if someone is ringing me, it will ring on whatever devices I have enabled or wish to have ringing. In my case, I've got it on Teams, and I want it on my mobile app as well. So again, it's choosing what you want it to ring on on whichever device you wish. To to ring on etc so i'm going to move that one across and i'm going to show you microsoft teams integration and as paul said it is really really embedded within teams we don't like some of our competitors need a gui to be installed and a separate exe to be installed we also when we make a call are not using our soft phone to make a call so we're using a proper embedded um, uh, um voice ap application within Microsoft Teams. So if you see Microsoft Teams, you'll know it's very good. I've been using it since November last year. I'm a very good uh, advocate for Teams. It does exactly what it says on the Teams, uh, on the tid, uh, tin, as it were. So hey, you can see this is my DDI number, obviously my extension number was 6709. So if anyone rang me externally or internally, it would ring. And I can make a call using my keypad here. Okay, if I wish to. So for an incoming call, um, I'm just going to uh, show an incoming call coming in. So let's have a bit of history. So, right, call coming in, nine, two, oh, three, seven, four, zero, six, seven, zero, nine. As you can see, I'm playing all parts on this. Um, call comes in and I can answer it. Call comes in. Onto the call. I'm just going to put that on mute. So you can see it pops up, does exactly the same as what you would have on uh, a call coming in, whether it's a Teams call. Similarly, if I make a call out, You can see it just boots up the Microsoft Teams. It doesn't use a third party application, a soft phone or anything similar. It just literally boots, boots up Teams. I'm just gonna mute that, there we go. From the call, I can, I have a keypad access to make a call from Teams. I can show to participants and I could add a third party into the call. So there's me on Teams. That's the mobile number I've just called. But I could, I could invite a third party person into the call. So I could invite someone within the Teams environment into the call by looking for their name. Or I could invite a, um, a external telephone number and put their number into the call and bring those into the call if I wish to. OK, so I also have the ability to, sorry, I also have the ability, let's get rid of that, to um, place them on hold, transfer or consult and transfer if we wish to. So I've got several several settings to make to, to do that call, just like you would do on a normal uh, phone call. But you're just using Microsoft, the invoice for Teams or our software application within Teams itself. Now um, you still get obviously a lot of the differences within Teams. You can create speed dials. So if you really like uh, some of the function keys like call pickup, or you wish to move the call from one device to another, you can create speed dials. As you can see here, all I've done is literally create a speed dial to do a call pickup. Um, for particular users, literally, it's just short codes that you can make on here. Um, if you wish to search for uh, certain people, so I'm going to search for my colleague Kevin. There we go, Kevin. Um, the difference being is now, instead of uh, just calling him on Teams call, I now have the option to ring him on his mobile. So if I know he's out of the office in an area that he doesn't have uh, Wi Fi or uh, 4G or 3G, and just he has G GSM call, I can make a call on that as well. So I have everything there. So I can do it one of two ways. So I, I get the ability to do a team school or a non-team school now, which you don't get with uh, with teams, etc. You still get all of uh, your history. So you can see on your history here, um, or whether it was an outgoing call on teams or whether it was a, a, a non-team school, you get all that. Um, and obviously you get all the other normal features so, such as voicemail and, and, and conferencing, all the normal features you get with teams. All we're doing is we're adding to the best parts of uh, Microsoft Teams um, with giving it a fully functional cloud PBX within Teams, which you may be asking, well, I know that Microsoft Teams does voice and, and they do um, um, a voice element. They do, 
But if you're looking at some of the features that Paul mentioned earlier, such as uh, hunt groups, call overflow, gr overflow calls, um, uh, call intrude, call whisper, auto, atten auto attendant, time profiles, all of those, those features that are, are literally been around for some time, those are the features, unfortunately, that uh, Microsoft does not give on its own. And that's where we come to the fold and we give you a true PBX feature set within Microsoft Teams as well. Um, should Microsoft Teams fall over? And as we know, it's fallen over four times this year already. You've still got the facility that um, if I wanted Teams not to work, then I've still got my soft phone that I can then bring up um, uh, and use. Um, sorry, uh, my soft phone that I can bring up and use uh, um, and make a call from. So I've got my soft phone that I can literally use. There we go. So you've still got that to be able to to you, so you've got your phone. So this, as well as giving you uh, um, a really cool um, application within the Microsoft Teams to make and receive calls, just like a true PBX, you're also getting disaster recovery and resiliency, which is absolutely brilliant. Uh, and that comes with the with, with the license. So you're getting, you know, absolutely uh, everything you need um, to make and receive a call and this DR plan, which is important in the, the current situation. Um, and it also means you can have a dispersed environment. So if you've got, say, 50 um, employees, but you only want to give Microsoft Teams to 20 or 30 of them, you can give the others the Cloudia soft phone and still be able to in, it literally uh, speak to with each other um, between um, environments. So it makes no dif difference. You'll still get BLF keys, etc., between the two environments, which is exactly what you need. Um, so that's cool. Okay, um, without any further ado, um, Paul also mentioned our network monitoring uh, application, which we also have, and hopefully you can see um, this. Um, I'm going to start off with the wallboard um, that it comes with. So this is the wallboard. It could be first thing in the morning, and you can see I've got four agents waiting to join in. None of them have logged in at the moment, so I, I need to make sure that, that, that people are going to be logging on um, in the morning. So the first thing they need to do is make sure that these people are logging on. So I'm going to, they come in and they log in to their application. And I'm just gonna, you should start to see people logging in. So you can start to see that a lot of these agents are now logging in. And they're becoming available for the various departments. So just want Katrina to log in. Hurry up, Katrina. You need to be log logged in. We're going to take we opening in a minute. There we go. And Katrina's logged in. Okay, so I can I can clearly see that um, everyone who should be available is available for the rep, uh, department. So our sales team has got people, our support team have got people, and our accounts team have got ready. So you can see there there we're all ready for calls to come in. So this is just showing these are just showing widgets, and I've just obviously this is a very busy screen, but this gives you an example of some of the things you could have. So here you can see the individual agents' um, statuses. We can put little pictures up if we want with them and showing how how long they've been logged in, etc. Here we can see the the live queues and and how many calls um, are are inbound, outbound for the number of agents, agent statuses, and any live calls, etc. So the best way to show this would be a call coming in. So I'm hopefully going to show a call coming in. So that should be a call coming in for sales. So that's a call coming in. You can see that there's a wait time, calls waiting. The agent will then pick up the call. Right, just waiting for the call to come in. Back to an agent, there we go. And you, you can, and you can see the let's 
as soon as the agent um, finishes the call, they relax the call, and you can see that they were on the call, and it's now 100% call. They've had one call, one call offered, one call answered, and they've all um, all working. So you get a lot of uh, real-time statistics, um, various different widgets you can have, and you can see like the average talk time, how many calls have been offered. So you can see real-time statistics on a wallboard, that's great, but not everyone wants wallboards, they actually want some historical reporting. So you can look at real-time monitoring, so you can see how many calls are real-time, real who's had the last call, who's currently on a call, et cetera. You can have all of that, of that information. You can also have reporting. So I want to report on a particular uh, queues. I want to look at all of the queues or the groups over the last 30 days. And I want to look at the breakdown of the calls. So this will give you some statistics. And there's, I can't believe anyone, there's not a statistic that um, there's not here. So we can see all of the agents, who's taken the most calls, um, literally percentage of calls taken, the service level agreement, how quickly they've answered the calls. You can have who disconnected the calls first. Was it the agent? Was it the caller? And obviously you really want the caller to be disconnected first. Um, you can look at, there's umpteen different statistics you can have. Now there's different, there's also unanswered calls. If you want to see who's un any calls that haven't been answered, who didn't answer any calls on a, 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 a per group basis, by day of the week, by hour, by attendance. And if you really want to look at all of the statistics for a particular user, a particular group, you can look at all of those um, icons and there's umpteen statistics that you can have. And as you can see, even the call list of details of unanswered calls, which is often quite handy, which calls were, were made, et cetera, so received. So you get all of these statistics. And that's great if you want to look at a particular group, but you can also look at individuals. So I can see, well, you know, I've got some people here. There's Daniel Schiffer. I want to look in the last 30 days, how many calls has he answered? And you can start looking at statistics for him. So he's had one call in the last 30 days. He's not done very well, uh, et cetera. Direction of inbound or outbound calls. So you can look at individuals. So this is going to give you um, a lot of statistics real time that I can instantly do. I can export all of this as an Excel or CSV or an XML page, which is really good. But you also might want some of this information to be emailed to you at a regular basis. So you can set up a schedule of, of um, those calls to be exported on whichever day of the week you want, in whichever format that you want. So I want them to come on a Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday at 5.30 uh, once a day and it's my daily report. And then I can choose what, you know, who, it, who it's sent to, etc. So you've got everything within um, the monitoring tools. I could go on, there's lots more that this obviously can show, but this just gives you a quick flavor of what M monitoring use can do. It really is a very powerful monitoring application that gives you a wallboard, real time statistics, and historical reporting, but not necessarily a contact center environment. It could be just a sales floor or a support floor that you want that to, to be used for. So um, that's really me um, done, unless there's anything else. So I'll, I'll hand back to. Um, Whoever's next to take over from it's, me. Yeah, no, it's me. Just so Back Paul to you. here. Yeah, Paul here. Um, so yeah, this is a really powerful tool, and I think um, where it kind of differs from um, a, a contact center, we call this an informal contact center. Whereas a contact center, a full-blown contact center, will cost you approximately um, thirty to sixty euros per user per month. Yeah. Whereas this is just a few euros per month. So it's just a nominal cost, which gives you the power of a contact center. Um, it's like a halfway house, really. So very, very powerful tool, especially if you've got a, a distributed workforce. So thank you very much for that. Back, back over to you, Gordon. All right, thanks very much, um, Paul and Ray. Um, that was a great presentation. Um, essentially, now what we want to do is we want to open up um, to anybody to ask a few questions and we will answer them to the best of our ability. And so, if does anybody have any questions they want to ask? I think there's some on the chat that's come in. Oh, one second now. Hi, I've had a few questions that have come in. Um, would you like me to read them out for you and you can sort of decide amongst yourselves who would maybe like to tackle them? Yeah, um, certainly. 
the first question is, is uh, are there any uh, standout advantages that you can achieve with cloud that traditional solutions can't offer? Um, Paul, if you don't mind, I'll take the first part of this one. Um, yeah. I suppose because I would have come from a traditional PBX background and essentially the, the two standout things that um, I can see in difference between traditional and cloud is number one, um, call recording. Um, to add call recording to a traditional telephone system is a very expensive um, add-on. And also what you find with it is, is that you then have to store it locally and then back it up somewhere. And again, it adds more expense. You're talking about keeping a large machine on site with hard drives, with failover on the hard drives, et cetera. Where is cloud? You switch it on, you buy the license, you switch it on and away you can go recording. And um, there's no infrastructure required. There's no additional hardware required. And the second, um, the second, the second advantage that I can see is the complete and utter mobility, in the sense that when you, um, if you lose internet connection to your to your office, and you have a hybrid solution on site, as soon as that internet connection is gone in the office, you no longer have any of your remote workers working and um, the office will immediately go dark the pbx phone system will go dark so therefore all of your remote remote workers are now offline however with the cloud solution you'll find that if your office goes dark for whatever reason if the power is off if there's a reboot if there's a power outage if there's a a, a drop in the broadband your remote workers will continue to work without any difficulty because they're connecting to the cloud, not back to your office. So there are two that are stand out for me. Paul, you might want to add to that. Yeah, no, I think you've you've hit it on the on the head there. Um, I think it's around flexible working. So flexible working, not just for that that user, but it's a, it's it's the flexibility and the scalability of the platform. First of all, in regards to cost, you only pay for what you use. So if you've got fifteen users you only pay for those 15 users. If that goes down to 12, you just jump straight down to 12 and you, you know, you're not charged uh, a, a premium uh, and that, you know, it's just, you're only just charged on consumption. Um, I think the resilience thing just knocks it on the head though, definitely. Um, um, uh, and, uh, and access to the platform because we've got, we've got consolidation that is going on in the market at the moment. Business is changing because of the, because of the, the nature of the way the last six to eight months has gone so you know organizations are moving into smaller offices uh, or having that distributed distributed workforce they need to just be able to do the tools to to carry on as normal and i think with cloud it's it's just a really powerful message you know it's once again and i'll go back to that mantra that i mentioned earlier work isn't something somewhere you go it's what you do and you should be able to work from wherever you are and I think with cloud, it just gives you the tools to do that. Yeah, and just to come back in there, um, from a cost perspective, essentially the main cost of any telephone system is the devices. And um, as of today, we are launching a promotion where um, we will be providing free devices with um, the Enfon product. So, like, I mean, there is no real, other than a small bit of installation, there's no real upfront costs and you don't have to have a large capex budget in order to implement the solution that that kind of leads in very well to the next question chaps which yes. is um can i keep my good. numbers if Sounds i good. move absolutely so essentially whatever solution you move to um this is a kind of a generic question it's not specific to enfon whatever solution you 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 move to um each communications will move your telephone numbers so without too much fuss and with a couple of forms filled out we will retain you your business will retain all of your old telephone numbers and we'll move them across okay and then there was follow-up to that as well can i add users on incrementally i'll leave that one with paul yeah absolutely so what we usually see on um larger usually with larger deployments it's just it could be spread across multiple sites and do do you do organizations want to do a big bang approach what we do um, is that we manage we manage the migration 
So um, we could say move the first 50 users across. Um, they would just forward their numbers to a virtual number that we would provide. So we could so we could start moving. Uh, you know whether it's via building or site or team uh, or division, we could start moving um, groups of users across to our platform. And then once all of the users have been moved across, then we could do the number porting at the end. So it just means that it's managed, it's scalable, uh, and it's just, you know, it, it, it just means there's low risk, basically. Um, you know, because number porting is is always uh, is always um, is is always difficult to manage, and I think when we do it this way, I just think the process works very very well, and it just adds it decreases the risk to any any deployment and any migration. Yeah, and, and just to add on to that, Paul, that would always be the philosophy of each of of each communications is, is that we try to get the new solution in place first get you used to the new solution, get you trained on the new solution before we do the big bang move of moving your telephone numbers, moving your, um, uh, your users straight across. We would always do it on a install side by side and train is always the process we would use before we move you across. And, and Gordon, you've got um, trials at the moment, haven't you? Free trial licenses for 30 days, is that correct chaps? That is correct. So I suppose the promotion at the moment is, is that you can try the licenses and if you decide to go with the product, we can then with the second promotion and you can avail of both promotions, um, you can get your devices for free as well. So that, that's my list of questions. Great. Excellent. So is there anybody else who wants to come in with a question? I think we're I think we're good to go. Um, so excellent. we are two minutes from eleven. So excellent timing. So I think at this point, go ahead, Paul. No, I just said good stuff. I know it's been great. So thanks yeah, for everyone. Yeah, and thanks very much as well for um, Paul and Ray's presentation. I thought it was excellent. And just I suppose if anybody has any further queries or if they um, find this product interesting and would like to um, get more information on it, uh, please feel free to contact us on um, www.avita.ie and you'll find quite a bit of information there and also um, we have a dedicated sales team ready to help you and a pre-sales team to help you figure out the best solution for your business. Okay, and on that note, uh, thank you to our panellists and thank you to our attendees and everyone um, be well and keep safe and we will have another session um, in the coming weeks and months. So um, thank you and good day.